Hey fam and welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So the other day I discussed the signs that you are committing emotional adultery. Today I want to address the eight signs on how to overcome emotional adultery. Stay tuned right after this. All right, fam, thanks so much for coming back. So I just want to remind you guys that this is actually a series. So there are several other videos. By the end of the series, there will be a playlist for all of them. So you can go ahead and check out the videos about emotional adultery. If you are committing, well, first of all, what is emotional adultery? If you're committing um, emotional adultery, how to overcome emotional adultery, which is this video right here. And then the final video will be how to forgive emotional adultery. So that will be the video series series and again there will be a playlist so without further ado let's jump into this video the first thing that you have to do is to accept responsibility for your actions as the emotional adulterer yes you do because you're the one who did it nobody else told you to do it nobody else gave you the permission to do it this is something that you started to do because you wanted to do it so take responsibility for your actions. The second thing that you and your spouse must do is that you both have to be willing to fight for the relationship. So you guys have had a discussion. Yes, this is what's going on. And now you're trying to get over this hump this person who actually started to creep their way into your relationship. And you two have decided to say, you know what? No, I want you. I don't want my friend. I actually want you. And so you guys have to say, you know what? I want you, but you also have to know that you both want the relationship with each other. The third thing that you must consider and understand is that for the most part, most of the time, the relationship is actually going to take an even deeper dip as in things are going to get worse versus them getting better at least right away. They're absolutely going to tank even further because now all of the wounds and everything are going to be peeled back. The layers, the things that you've been um, masking or not talking about or not addressing are the things that are going to happen in this stage. So it's going to get worse in your relationship before it absolutely gets better. And that is a stage, a step that you need to understand is going to happen. The fourth thing that you must do, especially if you were the emotional adulterer, is you have to cut off that friend completely. Get rid of their phone number. You have to, um, all of the social media. If you work with them, try to avoid them as much as possible because they are intruding. And it's because you let them because you left them in true because as I talked about yesterday or whenever I released that video you stopped um, enforcing the boundaries so because you let them overstep the boundaries now it made it easier for them to creep in and come or start to come in between you and your spouse or you and your partner so you have to make sure that they know which actually brings me into point number five where you actually give this person your friend a no contact letter and I wrote this down because I've actually never heard of this so this point is actually not mine but I definitely wanted to include it here because it is something that is great to do that way there is no way that your friend could mistake what you are trying to say to them so a no contact letter is exactly what it sounds like it's a handwritten statement it's not typed out it's not your email it's not text it is a hand written statement for the emotional adulterer to the other person explaining that the relationship is over. This letter should not be emotionally charged. It's meant to be a simple yet firm statement that the relationship is over, that it will not begin again, that it was wrong and that your marriage is now the top priority, your marriage or relationship, whatever word you need to insert there. So yes, you need to, I, I, I love that. I absolutely love that. There is no mistaking if I give you a handwritten letter, there is no way for you to interpret anything other than piss off. I know, it stings, it's harsh. But if you want to save your relationship, if your partner is worth fighting for, if your marriage is worth fighting for, damn it, you got to get rid of the riffraff. You got to get rid of the outsiders. 
The only way to move your relationship forward and, and, and definitely create the relationship that you've been pushing toward is to get rid of all of the people that are trying to drag you down, drain you, and hold you back. Again, you have to take responsibility because you let this happen. So now you have to put on your big girl panties, put on your big boy drawers, and give this person this letter. Mail it to them. Whatever you need to do for them to understand that there will be no more contact after this. Because this over here, this is more important. My wife is more important. My husband is more important. Even your boyfriend or girlfriend because... You might think that you want to move that relationship toward um, um, engagement or further it into marriage, but you can never do that if this other riffraff is in the way. The sixth thing that you must do, I already talked about how it's going to take a dip. This is where you have to peel back all of those layers, layers and explain to your spouse, to your partner, the needs that were not being met, which was why you felt the need to attach to the other person, the outsider. So you got to discuss all that stuff. Don't hold nothing back for fear of hurting the other person's feelings because you already did that by connecting with somebody else on an emotional level versus us discussing what was between us. You have to let your partner know what actually made you stray in the first place. What was it that they were not giving you that made you go outside. That, that's what you were seeking. You have to be open. You have to be transparent. You have to be honest. And don't feel guilty in the sense that I need to hold back and not tell him or her this because, you know, then it's just not going to be received well. I'm going to sound like a schmuck. I'm going to sound like a whatever. That time has actually already passed. And so in order to truly get over this hump in your relationship, you're going to have to be free. Let it all out. As I said, transparency, honest, open communication, which is what you were not having before, which is why you felt that you needed to connect to somebody else. So the only way that you're going to be able to connect further, deeper with your spouse is that now is the time to let it all out. Let them hear where they were going wrong and why you two didn't connect on a level that you felt that now that your friend knows you better than your spouse or that you are running to spend more time with your friend versus your spouse. You're now dressing up for your friend versus your spouse. You're giving your spouse the old frumpy look. And as soon as you're going out with this friend, you, man, you looking like, you shop. You shop. Yeah, I said shop. You dress to the nines. You dress for the gods. Going to hang out with your friend. Need to understand that. Understand the reasonings why. Go deep into your thought process and be able to relay that to your partner, to your spouse, even if you need to take time to write it down, because sometimes just being in the moment, just be, uh, being asked the question, you might not be able to think off the top of your head. So tell your partner, you know what? I really want to give you the answer, but right now I want to think about it so I can give you a deep enough, a clarified answer versus just giving you something off the top of my head and then maybe having to come back to you and, and add on to it. So truly think about the breakdown, what actually happened, what made you want to attach to somebody else other than your spouse, other than your partner. The seventh way to overcome this emotional adultery is literally just to be real and patient. And you got to answer each and every one of the questions that your spouse or partner has for you. No matter how irritating they are, no matter how intrusive you think they are, or maybe you think that they should be over asking you a particular question because you tried to explain it before. Think of another way to explain it because obviously they didn't get it. Or maybe they just need further clarification on what you were trying to say. But answer any and all of the questions that they may have because this is going to be a way to help mend and bring your relationship back together. 
But if you're holding back still, then what is the point? If you truly want to fight for this relationship to work out, then you have to really let down your guard. Be open and transparent. You do. There's just no other way around getting over this portion of it. So answer all the questions. Be patient because, sis, you did this. Bruh, you did this. So now your partner is just trying to understand what the heck went wrong. Why did this happen? How could this happen, right? It's a whole bunch of who, what, when, where, why in their head. And they got a whole bunch of questions. And you are the only one with the answers. That's it. Even if they went to talk to the friend, the friend can't give them the answers that you could. Because you're the one who's in the relationship with your spouse. In the relationship with your partner, not your friend. The eighth way to overcome this emotional adultery is to understand that great relationships are cultivated and created. They are not found. So this is going to take some work to get over. But it can happen. If you truly want to fight for your relationship, it can happen. You can do it. You can do it with your spouse. That's why you chose your spouse in the beginning. Because there was something about your spouse, not about your friend, that you chose to marry your spouse. 